Hello, welcome to Varm Blog, and today I'm tackling something that I think needs to be addressed. While I don't have any problem with psychoanalysis or philosophy, and in fact, I actually think in many ways a psychological model of how the individual interfaces with the collective and the aggregate is super important. And I think being philosophically rigorous is a way to get to truth. I think we have to be honest with the fact that most of what we see in the realm of political psychoanalysis and political um, political theory or political philosophy actually often is a substitute for engagement. I have often said that spinning your wheels on things that you don't see any efficacy for is a waste of time. And feeling good about yourself and achieving something political are two separate aims. You might see them as directly related, but if every reason that you do say a protest is about keeping morale up for the next political event, then you must ask yourself, what really causes the lack of morale? But I'm also beginning to really doubt a lot of people who say that one should not participate in politics because it leads to cults, or, or that we are constantly on repetition. These are deepities. They seem true enough, but what they actually mean is quite vague, but a person can easily make a career reinserting them and insisting on them. This was pretty common in the academic humanities because, let's be honest, humanities research really is hard to do, not because it takes a lot of work if you aren't doing field research or going into historical archives or reading massive amount of text, but if you're doing theoretical analysis, you can churn out papers with a few key heuristics and rubrics that you pull from another thinker and make your entire career out of that which is part of why the academic humanities aren't read even by people in them. So ask yourself what all this means. See, I've been pointing out that a lot of what people do as politics is not politics at all, what my friend Anton Yeager calls hyperpolitics is actually not really a form of politics, as in it is not really a dealing with the affairs of community or state. Politics is about social advantage and compromise in the way people work together in groups. Signaling alone from your computer is not political definitionally almost can't be. Yes, it can lead to political action. Yes, it can be part of political action, but in and of itself doesn't seem to do much of anything. But when you think about how much of our politics is speaking truth to power or telling the truth to the left or, or what is actually a long and prolonged avoidance of real political breakdown. And it's not just leftists to do it. Identitarians do it. We pointed out that the diversity of representation has not actually done anything about black poverty at all. Nor has all the talk on, on inequality done anything about inequality. If anything, it's gotten worse. And we have seen that in every system that I can think of, from unions to schools to whatever, we have an increasing administrative oligarchy. We like to call this the PMC. The problem with the PMC is it also blames many people who are not part of the oligarchical system, but may be competing to get in it for what is going on. Let's be honest, the reason why people have turned on the PMC and the reason why this concept from the late 60s, which was used to, to define something completely different than it is now, I mean, it was used by Barbara and John Ehrenreich to talk about the development and radicalization of a whole lot of new professionals who had real advantages in going into a Fordist and increasingly neoliberal management system in the developed world, a management system which has now become cartelized by elites who maintain that through generations. 
But we've also seen that so many people who have been educated for such jobs and pushed out are kept in marginal or transitionary working spots like baristas cannot um, really integrate into that system. And that system is more and more the realm of wealth. But a lot of people can make some money, not a lot of money, basically scraps talking to you about that. In many ways, you could scream at me. I do it. And this leads to something like theory as therapy, or theory as the therapeutic, or theory as narcissistic adjustment. And it leads to politics as identity. See, I've been saying for years that if people really believe that the personal is political, then they can easily flip it and think the political is personal. And becoming a Marxist is like becoming a punk rocker. It is an aesthetic affiliation. Little else. After all, what does anyone ask you to do? Even if you join uh, a sect or the DSA, the most you're going to be asked to do of your real work is canvas. Maybe give some money. Hence why... So much of the left operates like fandoms. But even the people critiquing that often don't have anything else on author. They're not talking to you about logistics. They're not talking to you about the way the, histor the history of the past informs the present. The reason why I go through all these pedantic ass uh, discussions about sociology and class theory isn't because you're supposed to take it and use it to to go radicalize the proletariat. Trust me, many better people have thought that and they've been wrong. No, I want you to see how these things all added to the conceptual framework we have now and how incoherent it often is, even amongst people who focus almost solely on class. The same is true with the political use of psychology and psychoanalysis. And this also leads to what people over at Less Wrong talk to as insight porn or the superficial dopamine rush of feeling like you get something, that you've understood something, like you've seen through the matrix. But it's a specious matrix from which you've seen through. What does it actually illustrate? Do you understand anything more about logistics breakdown or why there are more deaths of despair? Do you understand anything more about how race was constructed and how our current discourse continues to construct it while claiming to be against it? Do you have any idea how any of that works? See, that's what theory is for, to give you a useful lens on which to enact to change the world, not just to spin your wheels or to sell you something in boliation or to keep a couple more magazines in, in print. And trust me, it's easier. I know. I've done many podcasts. The moment I slap political on something, it'll be way more successful than anything else I do. Even if what I'm doing isn't that different than what I do in literary or sociological or historical analysis. Strictly speaking, this is barely politics, as I don't really think many of you use it to enact anything on the world, or at least I haven't seen a lot of evidence of it. Yes, philosophy matters. You need to think rigorously. Yes, consistent patterns of thought matter. You need to know how you think and what those are and how you're not tricking yourself by making exclusions and exceptions. But if you think consistency and conclusions are dogmatic adherence to any prior formulation, which was formulated for a completely different era of our economy, even if it's fundamentally true in the basics, will somehow get you through the current situation my friends, the more serious people in the room have gotten past that, and you are way behind.
So it's this easy theory where you can declare this and that is dead or we're stuck in a repetition compulsion and, and maybe we are, but not deal with the fact that food stocks are breaking down. The supply chains no longer make sense. That there's no one who has the power to, or even the physical capacity of aircraft carriers to truly police the world that led to the current thing that we have today. Furthermore, most of the economic and, and, and political theories that do seem to talk about this realistically do so with a gloss favoring the status quo as possible forever, which almost nobody seems to feel is true. And yes, to bring in the psychoanalysis or the pop psychology, this does lead to, to self-hatred, uh, nationalistic over-identification, incoherent populism, but it's a populism that doesn't fundamentally change the elites. See, and again, I'm going to pull from Anton Yeager. In an interview that he did with me that I'm going to release on this channel very soon, we talked about uh, Rebel Michel's uh, Iron Law of Oligarchy and how that's not really what works today. This is a different phase. The Iron Law of Oligarchy says that the people who enter a group, even if they enter relatively egalitarian democratically, will be able to establish a power base by the fact that they founded the system and know it better, and will also empower people who can operate that system pretty well, while basically apathy or overcomplication will keep other people from, from challenging them. So while egalitarian-based politics... Um, will lead to anti-egalitarian organizations uh, like we talk about with unions, fortresses, and finance where union leadership isn't even incentivized to increase its base or um, British labor's hostility towards a radicalized base because it causes it to lose power with its donor class. Similarly, with the DSA, one of the things the DSA must prove is not just that it can organize these socialists, but keep them in the Democratic Party and de-radicalize them, just like unions to prove their ability to leverage as the representative workers must actually be able to stop worker militancy when it's not convenient to prove that they have the power to do so. Otherwise, union leadership has no leverage. Screaming about this in Lacanian terms isn't going to help you, even if we talk about the lack. Now, I say this as a person who's been convinced that maybe there is more to psychoanalysis. Maybe there's a lot to be said about theory right now. And we're going to explore that too. But don't use theory to speak about politics when it's not really doing anything to help your understanding of the way political world works. See, it's not just that we can't get radical reforms through, we can't get basic reforms through. And it's reflected in the legal system, but the legal system itself tends to be behind the times. The norms of the legal system tend to actually, whether it be liberal or conservative, be catching up. And the few times that it has been ahead of the game, it's done so in profound social crisis when it looks like continued legislative action will lead to open hostility, a a.k.a. what becomes war by other means just becomes war. Now, we live in a time that has been the most given to confirmation bias that we've ever seen. There's plenty of reasons for that. Lots of it has to do with the fact that most journalists are very well-paid trust fund people because journalism is now an elite profession, which you have to work for free for years to really get into. Um, but uh, since no one is paying for people to go out and do hard reporting and because getting news faster can easily be done by going on Reddit or Twitter... Um, than it can be by actually slowly gathering information, what one sees is a total collapse of the investigative sphere of journalism, and journalists are increasingly putting narrative spin on tweet stenography. And you see this in when I talk about reporting. 
And then other people do the easy thing and you get five of the smartest people in the room to talk about a movie as if the movie was important. Not even a particularly artistically ambitious movie. But what does Marvel movies have to say about politics? Who gives a shit? If you think you're going to get profound messages from every piece of pop culture entertainment in your life, it is because you have forgotten the purpose of pop culture entertainment and maybe where you could find profundity in your life. It is escapism even when you look at it through the lens of socialism. There's an entire industry devoted to this, of which I am personally implicated, but you have to think about it. Are people using the psychoanalytic, our philosophical theories to help you understand what is going on and have a better understanding of how to act and build a program around it? Or how to, what we need to do to build a subject that could actually handle the situation? And to put that in the common terms, since people seem obsessed with that, what makes the people that can make things happen? Bloviating? Tweeting? I doubt it. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell. I have a Patreon if you want more. Have a good day.